Good morning, good morning, TMT, WC, hallelujah. Thank God for another day. Thank God that we can come together and fellowship and hug on each other and love on each other and, and be able to, to just fellowship with the brethren. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I am just, I couldn't hardly even sleep last night in just anticipation of what God is going to do today. I, I'm, I'm just excited. My spirit is jumping. Uh, the enemy is, is, is busy, but God is busier. And I just thank him for his word. I thank him for his love, for his grace and his new mercies this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started uh, with our song of praise this morning from the Master's Touch Worship Center Choir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not our music. This is not our music. Glory God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
from me. I'll be. Will anybody stand up that wants to be a miracle for God to just manifest himself in your life? Hallelujah. Y'all know he's still a miracle working God. He, he, he don't just do miracles in the Bible. He's, he's still doing miracles today. Is there anybody, good God of mine, who, who needs a miracle? Hallelujah. I, I dare you, like Big Mama said, I dare you to trust him. I dare you to believe in him. I dare you to trust him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty Hallelujah. for a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. Boy, that was a word already for the day. Good God Almighty. Glory God. Glory God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, that's the way to start a service right there, boy. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. So we're going to continue in this morning's service where Lady Monica will come and she will continue in the service and do what she does. It's so nice to have her beautiful smile back in the service again. Glory, God. Hallelujah. So um, we're going to have Lady Monica come with scripture, prayer, and her Monicaism, uh, and announcements as well. Glory, God. Y'all know Lady Monica wears many, many, many hats. So she has to get her choir together. You just going to have a band play this morning, baby? All right, Ben. Y'all play for Lady Monica now. All right. Glory to God. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Show me your miracle. Make me your miracle. Let me be in your example. Mm, that should be the cry of our hearts. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you all would... Um, Get your Bibles, and we're going to read from Ecclesiastes chapter 5, starting right. at verse 1. All right. Guard your steps to the house of God. Better to approach in obedience to offer than to offer the sacrifice as a fool do. For they are ignorant in doing wrong. Do not be to speak. And do not be impulsive to make a speech before God. God is in heaven and you're on earth. So let your words be few. Uh. I read to you Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3. And may God bless the hearers and the readers of his read word. Um, if we can stand so we can come to the throne of grace and pray. And let God just do what he does in our hearts so that we can lay at the altar our concerns, our hurt, our joy, our pain, so that we can be an example. He can make us an example. So he can show his miracle upon our life. Father God, we come to you, God. We come to this throne, God. We come with humility. We come humbly. We come with our cares. We come broken. We come sick. We come depressed. We come mourning our loved ones that we've lost. We come, Father, just because we need you, God. And we know that you are the only God that can provide peace. Yes, You're the only God that can heal the sick. Yes, You're the only God that can move mountains. And for that, God, we want to thank you for shedding your blood, God. We want to thank you, God, for being the God of love, being the God when we're lonely, 
being the God that we need, God. We just want to praise you, God. We just lift you, lift our voice at the altar, bring in our cares, God, bring in our concerns, God. There are people, Father, that don't know you, and Father God, they don't know what you can do. Father God, they don't know who you are. They don't know about the blood, God. And Father God, I just pray that anyone that's here that's contemplating if they should walk to the altar, if they should pray, if they should lift their voice, if they should raise their hand, God, yeah. that you give them something today that would speak to their spirit, man, that want to get to know you, that want to give their heart and their life to you, God, so they can have a better walk in this life, so they can have a, a comforter when they're, when they're sad, when they can have a doctor when they're sick, when they can have a uh, um, someone to to call on, someone to to be there at the time of need, God. Cover them, Father. Cover those that are here. Cover those that are uh, that are walk, walking in Your Word, God. Cover those that are praising in Your Word, God. That they would hear from You, God. Blessing them, Father. Blessing those that are lonely, Father. This season, God, there are so many people, Lord, that are lonely, that they think that the season is about bringing gifts and, you know, and giving gifts and spending money and, you know, and trying to make everybody happy. But God, you did that already. You know, you, you died for us. You were born for us, God. And let us not for, forget the reason for the season, that it's all about you, God, that it's all about your love. It's all about your word, God. And without that, we are lost. So God, I ask that you cover this service. You allow it to be what you want it to be, God. You give the words to the pastor the way you gave it to him when he was studying, God. I pray that no word fall on death ear, that it doesn't fall on ground, that it's falling in the heart of people that need to hear it, God, that want to hear it, that should hear it, God. And I just thank you for sending your heavenly angels to camp around, camp around this building, in this pulpit, in this sanctuary. I just thank you, Father, for your presence, because I feel your presence, God, and I just thank you, Father. I thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for your presence, and I just ask this all in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so, uh, we had Bible study this Thursday, and Pastor Slaughter talked about the attributes of God. We are doing part two. And if you missed that, please go to our YouTube channel or back to our Facebook. It was a wonderful, he gave scripture. So if you want to follow along with what he spoke about, the scriptures were listed in the comments. So please go and listen. And it's such a it's, such, it's so good to know the attributes, you know. We know so much about our spouse, our children, our friends, our job, and the things that we like. But what do we know about God, you know? And we want to be able to share that with others, you know. And the only way we can do that is going to a Bible study class, going to a teaching where you can learn about God's Word. So, Pastor Slaughter, thank you so much for that. He will be in another week. Um, next week we will have our... Um, couples retreat we'll be talking about renewing your marriage we're talking about different ways that you can do that we um, talked about your thoughts you know in the first part and then we talked about the direction of your marriage and this week we'll be going into a different season so um stay tuned follow us on twitter at tmtwc1 facebook at tmtwc um, YouTube, you can always subscribe and get the services, or our Instagram at TMTWC9, or just be here at 7 o'clock, 3331 Blue Ridge Road, where you can enjoy yourself in Bible study or a couple's Amen. retreat. Um, there's no there's no formalities here. You just come as you are. You know, you just bring your cares. You can open your heart and your mind so you can be a blessing to others and you, and others can be a blessing to you. And we thank God for that. Amen. 
And now for my Monica is um, All right now. Life is full of contrasts. We go through mountains and valleys. We go through successes and failures. Mm. We have wins and we have loss. Mm. In the weather, there are four seasons. But in our lives, there are dozens of seasons, mm. different seasons. And every season includes good and bad. Amen. You may think, of, think that only time you're in God, you may think that the only time that you're in God's will is when you're in church or having a quiet time, but you can be in God's will anytime. You can be in God's will cleaning your car. You can be in God's will moving to a different location to stand right where you are. You may be going through a season right now that's not a good season, not beautiful. You know, your finances may be ugly. Your marriage may be ugly. Your relationship with your family may be ugly. But God can make something good out of everything that you're going through. Oh my God. So God takes even the bad things and use them for your good. So remember that although you may be going through a season in your life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God is right there. Oh and all you have to do is call on him. Mm -hmm and pray and pray and, and get around people that is going to help you see your relationship in God. You know, we are surround ourselves by people when we are moving to a different phase in our life. We are going to different things in our life. So we put ourselves in circles that are comfortable to the, what we're trying to obtain. So if we're trying to go to school, we be around people that's going to energize us to do that. If we're trying to, you know, do something in the job, we get someone that rallies around that. But when you're going through a, a spiritual struggle and a spiritual battle, you need to surround yourselves around people that are going to help you, that's going to pray with you, and that's going to cultivate what God is doing in your life. That's my Monica-ism. All right now. All right. So now we are going to have our offering. So this is where everyone, even you on, on our website that, that is um, Facebook Live, you can be a part of this service as well. We are going to um, get ready to get our offering in our hand where we can give our pledges to God. God loves a chill forgiver. So that, those that are online, you can go to our website at tmtwc.org, or you can cash app us with dollar sign at tmtwc. We just want to thank everybody for being um, gracious. We just want to thank everybody for the offering that you've been giving. It has not fallen on, on follow ground. We're using it to upbuild God's kingdom in this church. Amen. So everybody that's on my left, go left. Everybody on my right, go right. And if you don't have any money, just stand up, touch the bucket by faith, that God will fill your pockets to bless, be a blessing to his ministry. Hallelujah. We thank you. And we thank those that are online that's watching us Facebook Live. We want to um, thank you for your giving. Um, it does not go unappreciated. Now we're going to lift the offering up to God. Lord God, we just lift this offering to you, Father. We just praise you and just thank you for those that, um, that are giving and those that had a desire but did not have the means that they would be able to give next time, God. We will use this offering to upbuild your kingdom, God. And we just thank you, Father, and we ask this all in your name, Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So Amen. my job here is done. Good job. You know, you guys, I am ready to hear what this word is coming from this man of God. He was up so late last night. Just I could hear him at the table. Mm, 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 mm. So, God, I just pray you give it to him the way you gave it to him last night. And I pray that... We receive it, Father, and apply it to our lives. And here we are, Pastor Slaughter. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. Baby, thank you for the wonderful job. Awesome Monica-ism. As usual, Sundays are just not the same without a Monica-ism in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to... Um, Jump right in the word. We're going to have our song of preparation. Um, 
And I tell you, man, this week has been an experience. Um, you know, I'm always seeking God and and praying and just just looking uh, physically and spiritually on on what God wants me to talk about and preach about. And a lot of times he 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 gives me things uh, that I'm dealing with in my life. A lot of time he gives me things that. I see others are dealing with, but uh, this week he, he just opened up something to me that just blessed my soul. God, good God of mine, just bless my soul. So um, this week, this song, man, for some reason, I don't know what it is, but it's like God will just give me a song. And I just play it over. And it could be a song I've heard before, but for some reason at this time and season, it just means something just different to you. And I've been playing this song over and 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 over again. And it has blessed my soul. So uh, I just thank God um, for where he has me in my life. I thank God for you, and I pray that you receive this word the way God gave it to me. So we're going to get started with a song of preparation. Uh, this is not our music. This is not our music. Hallelujah. Old school.
to say what you want to say, how you want to say it, and when you want to say it. God, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. It is in the name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. And everybody say amen, amen, amen. There is no other name that I know but Jesus. Hallelujah. You can, you can have all kind of other religions, and I respect you, and that, if that's what you want to do, do you. But let me tell you, nobody, good God Almighty, can do you like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning, beloved, um, I, I just want to speak to you. Uh, from my heart, man, I, I, I've i been dealing with some things this week, 
and I've, I've met, you know, I meet people all the time every day, and uh, I'm a studier of people. I, I just sit back and I look and I, I see people's reactions and, you know, how they react to certain things. I, I observe people. I, I just watch people. And, and I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people. My wife does that. You know, just watch her people. Uh, but this week, God just started dealing with me. And I just started thinking, just thinking about sin. In this world, I started thinking about how so many people are so caught up in so many different things in life. You know, we 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 but we're believing that 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 money is everything. That that living in the big house is what it's about, or or driving a certain car. You you got people that that are broke. But driving a Mercedes, my God, my God. broke, living in a 3,600 square foot home, broke, but wearing all kind of designer clothes and all this and that. And, and we're running and we're doing things that is not what God wants us to do. I, I, I was thinking about the, the, the struggle of sin in the church. In the church, we, we, we're, we're caught up with looking holy, talking saved, dressing like we, 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 we are saved. We, we, we're concerned about how big the church is. We're concerned about calling this preacher and that preacher to preach and getting money here and money there and, 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 and caught up in so many things that ain't got nothing to do with this word. With this word. I, I started thinking about the, the sin in my life and the things I go through and the, the struggles that I have. And, and I started thinking about sin in your life what you struggle with and what you deal with. And, and I don't know what it is, but the one thing I do know is that we all have something in us. We all deal with something that we got to give to Jesus. And as I was thinking about that, and I was praying and crying out to God. I was like, Lord, just look at this world. Look at where it's headed. Look at, at the church. We, we, we're, we're hearing about this in the church and, and that going on. And, and you got so many killings in the world. And, and, and everybody's doing everything that they want to do. And, 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 and we don't mind the things of Jesus. We, we're, we're, the, 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 the saying in the world is if it feels good, do it. It don't matter who you got to walk over. You go and get yours. And, 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 and I started crying out to God like, Father, what's going on? What's, what, what's happening in this world where we're so caught up in so much? And as I was, as I was praying, and crying out to God. He showed me this world. And there was people walking all around the world. And as, they, as everybody was walking and I saw myself, I saw everybody walking around. It was raining. Woo, Jesus, it, it was raining all over and, and, and people was just walking all around. And then, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I had 
rain gear on. And, and I saw certain people that had rain gear on and, 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 and others didn't have it and they were just in the rain and just walking and doing their thing and I'm like, God, what is this? What, what's going on? <laughs> and what he told me, he said, sin is raining down <laughs> on everybody. If, if you're saved, sin is raining down. If you're not saved, good God of my sin, hallelujah, is, is raining down on everybody. It, it's, it's raining, hallelujah, on the just. <laughs> and it's raining, hallelujah, on the unjust. So, so as I was looking and I saw this rain just coming down, and, and God said, that's sin. That's all in this world. And then I said, well, well God, why do some have rain garments on. Some had had garments on that was covering them. Good God Almighty. From the rain of sin. And, and what he told me, he said, some have made a decision to follow me. <laughs> and, and, and they have put on the garments of justification they have put on the garment of sanctification hallelujah and they put on the garment good God almighty of glorification hallelujah hallelujah so 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 he let me know that 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 sin has no respect a person good God almighty that that it don't matter if you're saved or you're not saved, it don't matter if you know him or you don't know him. We all, good God Almighty, have sin, hallelujah, raining down, Woo, Jesus, on us all. So I, I started thinking it, and he just started pouring into me. He started letting me know that some, hallelujah, hallelujah, some have decided to put on the, the, the garment of justification, sanctification, and glorification. So I started reading and, and studying what it meant, hallelujah, hallelujah. And, 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 and what he took me to was 2 Corinthians. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 1 and 10. Whoo, Jesus. Good God Almighty. 2 Corinthians 1 and 10. And it says, hallelujah. Who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us in whom we trust <laughs> that he will still, hallelujah, hallelujah, hey God, that he will still <laughs> Deliver us. Hallelujah. So, 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 beloved, in the text, we have to understand that we see three aspects of deliverance in the text. The, 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 the text says, who delivered us from so great a death, the text says, who delivers us in, 
Hold on now. Hold on. Who delivered us? Which is past tense. And then the text says from so and does good God Almighty deliver us. So it's who delivered, who does deliver. And then he says, and whom we trust will still, hallelujah, deliver us. So, beloved, in the text, what we're seeing is justification, mm -hmm. sanctification, mm -hmm. and glorification. Hallelujah. So, let, let, let me just give you an overview of each. So, beloved, justification is salvation from the penalty of sin. Sanctification is salvation from the power of sin. Hallelujah. And, and glorification is salvation from the presence of sin. <laughs> Hey, God, hallelujah. So we have justification, salvation from the penalty of sin, sanctification, which is salvation from the power of sin, and then glorification, good God Almighty, is salvation from the presence of sin. Glory, God, glory, God. And, and then to break it down even further, justification is, is past. It was done once. Hallelujah. Sanctification is continuous. It's, it's, it's progressive. It's an ongoing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then glorification is in the future. It's, it's coming. It's what we got to look forward to. It's what we keep our hope. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's what we keep our hope in. And, and even to break it down even further. Hallelujah. Justification is imputed, which means it is legally credited from outside. Hallelujah. That means you ain't did nothing to be justified. You, you ain't good enough. You, you ain't holy enough. You ain't saved enough. Hallelujah. It was just imputed to you when you accepted. Hallelujah. That man named Jesus. Sanctification is something that is imparted from within. Sanctification is what goes on inside of you, renewing your mind, protecting your thought, re realizing what you're speaking, watching what you listen to, what goes on, what goes inside in your heart, sanctification, and then glorification is created in heaven by God. Hallelujah. It, it, it's the only thing, it's the presence where there is no sin. When we get to glory, when we get to heaven, there will be no sin. It will be absent. There's no rain. Hallelujah. In heaven. Good God Almighty. So how does God fit in justification? In justification, God's work is for us. He worked for us. He sent his only son on the cross to die for our sins. That his blood, good God Almighty, may cover our sins. So when we believe, good God Almighty, in Jesus immediately, hallelujah, we are justified. Not because of what you did, hallelujah, but because of God's work for us. And in sanctification, hallelujah, is God's work within us. God working within us. Hallelujah. And then in glorification, hallelujah, is God's work to us. He, he, he's built a, a place 
where, where the Bible says the streets are gold. Hallelujah. The Bible says there is no more death. Hallelujah. There is no more suffering. Hallelujah. We won't have to worry about where we're going to live, the car we're going to drive, the, well, cancer and diabetes and, and heart attacks. Hallelujah. The, this glorification, good God Almighty, is God's work to us. Hallelujah. So, so, so if we read the text again, and we get an understanding now that we have an understanding of this garments of rain gear of justification, sanctification, and glorification. Then the text would read like this. The text would read who delivered, which is justification, us from so great a death and does deliver which is sanctification, us, in whom we trust, he will still, hallelujah, he will still deliver us, which is glorification, hallelujah. So, so beloved, today, we're just going to talk about, I ain't read the title of my text, the title is, is called, It's Raining. It's raining. And beloved, you need to put on your rain gear of justification, sanctification, and glorification. Hallelujah. So, beloved, we're going to take some time and, and get an understanding. You know, it's, it's time out to just be emotional Christians. It's, it's time out to just coming to church and raising your hand because you know when to raise your hand. It's time that we understand, hallelujah, this rain gear, good God Almighty, that we have on while it's raining sin all around us, all on us, and on you. If you saved, you still got sin that you got to deal with. If you ain't saved, you got sin that you dealing with. And the thing about you is that your future is in the depths of hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, beloved, we're going to take some time and we're going to get an understanding of each. Number one, justification. Justification is a one-time event occurring when we receive salvation and enter into a relationship with God. Justification occurs when God frees us from the penalty of sin. It is the moment God declares us righteous because of the sinless perfect life of his son Jesus. You ain't justified because you go deliver food to the poor. You ain't justified because you, you go visit the sick. You ain't justified because you tithe every Sunday. You are only justified because Jesus Christ lived a perfect life. And because of his life, God justified you by your faith in Jesus. You and I didn't earn this status. We cannot do anything for ourselves to be declared righteous. As Isaiah says, our righteousness is like filthy rags to God. But because of the righteousness of Jesus, God declares us righteous and justified. Hallelujah. So through justification, the penalty of sin has been eternally elim eliminated. Because of just justification, we don't, we're not under the penalty of sin. However, good God Almighty, our journey as Christians and our battle against sin is just beginning. Mm -hmm. 
when we are justified, when you give your life to Christ, let me tell you, that is when your battle with sin just starts. I, 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 I heard Bishop Noah Jones said, he said, I did not know how strong sin was until I met Jesus. He, he said, I did not know the power of sin until I became saved and my eyes was opened to what sin really is. Hallelujah. So, beloved, this refers to the act which declares a person righteous in the sight of God. In justification, we are saved from the penalty of sin. This work is entirely of God, which is passive, and outside of us through the imputed, which is the legally credited righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So it is past, finished, and as the Greek tense often show, done once and non-repeatable. You, you don't need to be justified over and over and over again. Once God justified you, you are justified by him through Christ Jesus. It is done by grace through the vehicle of faith alone. Romans 5 and 1 says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Secondly, beloved, we're going to break down sanctification. Sanctification. Even though we are justified, we still wrestle with a sinful nature that wages war inside of us. Don't you let nobody try to tell you that once you are saved, you ain't going to never sin again. Don't you let nobody try to show you that because they in church and they got a hat laid to the side and they know how to holy dance better than everybody in the church, that sin is something they don't deal with. Everybody, hallelujah, deals with sin. So, beloved, God's sanctification is Christ freeing us from the power of sin in our everyday lives. It is the process that God is working in our lives to conform us to the image of his son, Jesus. Beloved, sanctification is an ongoing process. It is a growth. It, it is something where you can say, the things I used to do, I don't do no more. You, you, you can even say, the things I used to do, I don't do as much because I'm growing in Christ. The, 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 the more I get to know him, the more I get to understand him, the less sin I do. And, and, and then when I, when, I, when I conquer that sin, hallelujah, hallelujah, then there's another one, hallelujah, that I need to deal with. But I'm being sanctified by Christ Jesus in my mind, in my heart, hallelujah, and in my soul. Glory God. God's sanctifying work in our lives begins the moment we are justified. Mm -hmm. And he continues to sanctify us until his work is completed when we enter into glory with him. So this sanctification process is not a one-time thing. This sanctification process continues until he calls you home to glory with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This refers to a separation from sin and the world. And a separation to God and his word. 
In sanctification, we are saved and being saved from the power of sin. Hallelujah. Sanctification is past, which means positional at salvation. And present continuous, which is progressive by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that is within me. Timothy 4.18 says, The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the word here, bring me safely, is the Greek sozo which the same word refers to as being saved. This work is continuous unto glorification. Hallelujah. So, beloved, you can't get so caught up in what everybody else... And see, that's what the enemy likes to do to you. He likes, to sh he likes for you to look on Facebook and look what everybody else doing, traveling... Buying houses, doing all of this, and they want you to look at you. Well, look at me. Look at what I'm going through. I'm dealing with this. They in church saved. They ain't sinning. No, they got sin. They, they dealing with it. It's just how they deal with it. See? But through sanctification. That's why it's so important to come to church. To get a word to sanctify your mind. To grow in glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians 1 and 6 says, And I am sure of this, hallelujah, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus. My God, my God. 1 John 3 and 3 says, And everyone who hopes in him purifies himself and as he is pure. Colossians 3 and 10 says, And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of the creator. And then lastly, Philippians 2 and 12 says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. See, there's some responsibility that you have within you. Yes. Hallelujah. Sanctification is not a license just to sin. I had a brother call me a few days ago. He, he said, man, I, I got caught up and met a friend and we went out gambling and partying and I feel so bad. I said, well, brother, the good news is, is that you feel bad. I would be concerned. Hallelujah. If, if you could just go out and sin and, and do all the things you want to do and not have no sense of resentment. Not have no feeling of, Lord, I, I've hurt you. Forgive me. Not have a sense that you feel bad for your actions. Yes. Yes. Beloved, the Bible says that we are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And lastly, as I come to a close, glorification. Hallelujah. Now, glorification is when we will one day be free from the presence, hallelujah, of sin. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a life? My baby said, oh, I can't imagine that. I know you right. A life with no sin, a life with nothing but love, nothing but peace, nothing but joy. 
You ain't got to worry about money because everything you see is yours. You ain't got to worry about what kind of car you drive because everything is right there that you need. You ain't got to worry about the kind of house you got because everybody got a mansion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, beloved, beloved, it is the fulfillment of our salvation or the end of our Christian life when we are going to leave this earth and we're going to be in a glorified body in the presence of Christ. Our faith will be sight. One day we will see and know all things in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God's work of justification, sanctification, and glorification work in tandem to bring us from being utterly lost mm -hmm. and apart from God to spending eternity with him in heaven. See, beloved, God has a system in place. He has a presence that he needs us to understand as we go through this life and, and we put on this sanctified water uniform. I like that. We have to understand the process of justification, the process of sanctification, and the process of glorification. Now, this refers to the final change and redemption of the body. That's glorification. And glorification, we are saved from the presence of sin in us and in the world. 2 Corinthians 5 and 1 says, For we know that if the tent that is in our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Romans 8, 21 through 23 says that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption to obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly. And as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Now, beloved, why do we groan? We groan because we live in sinful flesh and await the redemption of such. The experience and dissatisfaction with sin in Romans 7 and the victories over it in Romans 8 are concurrent. You can't have Romans 7 without having Romans 8. The two separate is the, to, de, to separate the two is to deny one or the other. Mm -hmm. It is also arguable that we cannot know the experiences in Romans 7. And y'all know Romans 7 is when Paul talked about the battle. The things that I want to do, mm -hmm. I don't do. But the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. That's Romans 7. And in Romans 8 talks about we being conquerors. Hallelujah. Through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. So beloved, today, as you walk through life, as you go through your trials and tribulations, as you walk around under this rain, that's coming down of sin. Please, in the name of Jesus, take these garments of rain gear and place them on you and understand 
how they work. Understand justification. Understand sanctification. And understand glorification. Not a license to sin. But a plan to escape sin. Hallelujah. May we all stand. May we all stand. I, I, I pray. That, that something was said this morning that, that shakes you, that, that, that wakes you up and, and, and to understand that as this rain comes down of sin in our lives, if you don't do something to get out of the rain, you're going to catch pneumonia. You're going to catch a cold. You're going to be sick. You're going to be laying on your bed in a burning hell. Unless, hallelujah, hallelujah. you put on these garments of rain gear called justification, mm -hmm. sanctification, and glorification. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. If there be one. Hallelujah. This is not our music. This is not our music. If there be one. Come on all over the room. Lift your hands. Where you say, Pastor, it's time. Come on and give him glory. It's, it's time for me to make a change in my life. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of, of, of walking in this world. And, and, and rain is all over me. And I'm soaking wet. And, and I'm always sick. Always coughing. Nothing never changes. Well, beloved, it's time to come out of the rain. It's time to come out of the rain for just enough time to put your garments of rain gear on. And then go back in the rain. Because you can't get out of the rain. You go always have the rain. But we want you to put the garments of rain gear on. If it's time for you to put these garments of justification, sanctification, and glorification on, would you come? Would you come? If you're tired of being wet if you're tired of walking in, in soggy shoes of sin it's time to make a change would you come and, and, and there may be one where you say pastor I got the rain gear on but from time to time I, I get uncomfortable and I, I take it off sometimes I, I take the hat off, I take the galoshes off, and, 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 and I know what I'm supposed to do. But I find myself not doing those things. Would you come? It's, it's time that you rededicate your life. And it's time that you renew the Spirit of God that is in you. And get your mind sanctified in him. It's a process, y'all. And there may be another where you say, Pastor, I hear you. I love what you and Lady Monica are doing. And I want to be a part of the Master's Touch Worship Center. I, I, I want to be a part of what you're doing as you're trumpeting truth. And reaching those that are lost. Would you come? Would you come? And if you're online, you, you don't have to be seen by me. God sees you. If any of those invitations are you, stand, hallelujah, right where you are. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, God, for speaking. We thank you for teaching. We thank you, God, for giving us revelation about the reign of sin that's raining down on all of us. 
But we thank you, God, that you've given us a plan. We thank you, God, for the garments that you've given us to put on, to be able to settle, to be able to walk and dwell while it's still raining. We can put on the garments of justification, sanctification, and glorification. God, we love you. There's not enough we can do to tell you how much we thank you for all you are and all that you've done. So with that, Father, the only way we see fit to thank you is to give our lives to you, to give our hearts, minds, and soul all to you for a price has been paid for us and we're cashing in the debt through your son, Jesus. God, we love you. We thank you and we honor you. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. This is not our music. This is not our music. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is not our music. Well, I pray, I pray that you receive this word the way God has allowed me to receive this word. But let me tell you, this word changed my life. This word changed my life. And I pray that it change yours as well. So, beloved, we, we thank you, we honor you, we glorify your name. Do you have anything, baby? We look forward to seeing you on Thursday at 7 p.m. for our couples retreat. We're excited about what God is doing in this ministry. And we thank you. Father, we thank you for another day. We give your name glory for all you are and all you do. And we thank you, God, for your word today. Thank you, God, for explaining to us justification. Allowing us to understand sanctification. And Lord, we're excited about the glorification that is to come. Lord, we love you. Thank you for writing your plan of salvation out for us, God. That all we have to do is walk in it. Cover us and keep us. Cover our homes in the blood of Jesus. Let us walk in you and your thoughts and your mind, your will and your way. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Everybody that's here, I have to hug you, shake your hand, and love on you. God bless you guys. We will see you Thursday, 7 p.m., 3331 Blue Ridge Road. God bless you.